Do you want to know what happened in round 18 of Super Rugby? Stay tuned for this video. Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby guys. So the regular season of Super Rugby is done and this is how the quarterfinals look. The Crusaders are going up against the Highlanders, the Hurricanes up against the Bulls, the Jaguares versus the Chiefs and then the Brumbies versus the Sharks. Yes, you heard correctly, the Highlanders and the Chiefs did make it into the quarterfinals against all the odds they were ridiculously poor in the start of the year, I think I can say that, but they fixed everything and they got themselves back on track and won a couple of games here at the end of the season and now they are in the quarterfinal spot. The prediction winner for Super, for Super Brew this weekend, uh, Legendary and I won it and then the leader for the pool is still Spoon. Before we get into the video, I want to just ask, I'm thinking of doing reaction videos for the highlights of the quarterfinals, semifinals and the finals. Uh, you can maybe say what your thoughts are. If you're maybe a creator, you can leave your thoughts. I'm especially worried about copy copyright infringement, but I think as far as I know, it's fair use. Uh, let me know if you know anything a little bit more about it or let me know what your thoughts are what I should maybe do or should I shouldn't I rather go that uh, route uh, let's get into the games of the weekend so the Highlanders beat the Waratahs 49 to 12 the Waratahs they had a couple of big names missing especially Foley Hooper and Beal so those second stringers that stepped up they really didn't have a great game at all. They could just not keep possession of the ball, turning over the ball 15 times in the whole match. The Highlanders, they had a massive bonus point victory to get into the 8th spot in Super Rugby and ultimately getting that spot in the quarterfinals, going to the Crusaders next week in Christchurch. The Highlanders, they just came out all guns blazing in the start of the match getting three tries in the first 20 minutes as far as I have it. Um, possession of the ball 59% and they beat 16 defenders so they just sliced through the Waratahs defense all game long. After the victory uh, they needed a couple of things to still go in their way. They needed the Chiefs or the Rebels not to win by a bonus point. That did not happen. The Chiefs actually won with a bonus point. So then it all came down to that last game and I'm pretty sure they probably stayed up all night. I think the game was played at 3 a.m. New Zealand time um, between the Lions and the Bulls. The Lions shouldn't have gotten any point from that game and it actually happened. So the Highlanders came through playing against the Crusaders next week. The Waratahs, they had a season of slim margins. Uh, we all know they just won games or they just lost them. Um, they capped it off with a massive loss of 37 points though. That wasn't the biggest margin victory of the weekend though. The Chiefs beating the Rebels 59-8 to in Melbourne. The Rebels, they still had a chance when they came into this game to get into a quarterfinal position. Uh, their season will now be remembered for a good start to the season where they looked like actual contenders and then ending poorly once more just like last year. Quade Cooper he had two shocking kicks early in the game the Chiefs just capitalized on the, that and scored two quick tries uh, as well as another mistake they made and the Chiefs scored from that as well. The Rebels in that game conceded 21 turnovers if you don't have the ball your defense at least has to be good it wasn't 20 missed tackles throughout the game. The Chiefs, they had a staggering 9 tries in that game. The chances for them to get into a playoff spot was very slim. Um, they needed a big margin win and that's what they got. They turned the page in the second part of the season. As you could see from their scorecard, they had a lot of losses in the start of the season. And they have a lot of victories now. 
um, especially after that win over the Crusaders, they just look like an unstoppable side. In contrast to earlier this season, the Chiefs actually had two big names on the field. It was Retallick and Kane. Boshia, he stood out again. Anton Leonard Brown, he did what he does. He just busted tackles and ran great lines. And then a standout player, Stevenson, in this game. He was just a player that rose to the occasion. Um, where they just needed to score a lot of tries. He was the finisher capping off all those tries. Now they're heading over to the Jaguares in Argentina next week and it's going to be a free-flowing attacking game. I can't wa wait to see that one. Next up it was the Jaguares beating the Sunwolves 52 to 10. The Jaguares they rested some big name players but they were still loaded with talent. The Sunwolves this finishes off their season. They get the wooden spoon for the third time in four years they only scored two tries um, and this was from consistent performance Masi Rewa and Funden Jeffer if there's anyone that stood out this season for the Sunwolves it would be those two players the Aguares, they had some great individual performances Cantaliere two tries then also tries for Carreras Montoya Malia, Maroni and Ortega Desio. It was a great game again with ball in hand, 10 clean breaks for the Aguares and they just utilize their kicking better this season. They get into good positions on the field using their kicks. In the past they usually did not kick and try to run every single ball. They don't do that anymore, they only strike when there is an opportunity and they're very dangerous um, by doing that. They host the Chiefs next week and as I said with the Chiefs review, I can't wait to see that one. It's going to be a lot of attacking rugby in that game. Up next it was a game that didn't actually have an impact on the season. The Hurricanes versus the Blues. The Blues, they just had to play for pride in this game. As I said, there was no effect on the ultimate log from this game. The Blues, they were in the driver's seat the whole first half. But somehow they threw it away in the second half. Guys like Nana, he really played well in this last game. Sonny Bill Williams, he also had a good outing. He played a full 80 minutes, so that would be good for all black selectors to see. Um, all our dreams came true for about 10 minutes in that game. Sonny Bill Williams and Ma'a Nanu playing together as we wanted them to play from the start of the season. For the Hurricanes, they won at the end. They're having a good second half performance. Their subs really made a difference. They won ultimately with five points and that was good for me. That's exactly what I predicted from that game. The second half, as I said, got better. Guys like Fletcher Smith, who isn't actually an experienced player, he just brought a different aspect to their game. A lot of chip, chip kicks were put over for him to get and they scored, a, I think, two tries from doing that. Umaga Jensen, he had a good game as well. Um, he's just announced himself to be on the bench probably for the remainder of the season. Hopefully for him that works out. They host the Bulls next week. Um, the Bulls who have traveled from New Zealand back to South Africa have to travel over there again. Um, you have to say the Hurricanes are probably favorites for that one. Up next it was the Brumbies beating the Reds 40 to 27. The Reds got two yellow cards early on in that game in the first half and that just could not help them in the game where they played for pride. Tupo, he was yellow carded for a high tackle. Again, it's a difficult one. It's questionable. It was a solid hit from him. I think it was on shoulder height, which is a legal tackle. Uh, the referee, he said Tupac could have tried to tackle lower. I, yes, he could probably, but you can't really give someone a yellow card for giving him a hard hit, which is completely in the laws. If you might disagree or you have another opinion, maybe you know the laws a little bit better than me. Please leave a comment and tell me what you thought about that tackle. The Reds, they now greet a couple of big names. Two big standout players that will be leaving now is Karevi and Higginbottom. The Brumbies ultimately got a, a comfortable victory with six tries. They only had 47% possession actually of the ball, but they didn't need the ball to actually win that game. 
the Reds, they conceded 15 turnovers and 19 um, missed tackles. So that's what the Brumbies capitalized on. Next week, they are hosting the Sharks in the quarterfinal. Next up, it was the game that the Sharks won in the 80th minute. Um, the Storm was going down 9-12 to to the Sharks. It was a game that just broke all the Stormers' hearts. Uh, the Sharks, they got the win. But it was all but a good performance. They had 56% possession. And for the first 20 minutes, I think it was probably close to 80% possession. And they just couldn't break the defensive line of the Stormers. Which wasn't that good actually. They had, I think, 20 missed tackles. The Sharks, something they need to work on. They gave away 10 penalties in that game. And you can't afford that going into the quarterfinals. So yes, for them, it's going to be a battle to fix a lot of mistakes they made throughout the week if they want to actually stand a chance against the Brumbies. For the Stormers, it was their game to lose. They gave one intercept try where they looked like scoring. They just couldn't cross the try line again this week, even though they looked like crossing the line every now and then. They had some questionable calls at the end of the game there for me. If you are in the opposition territory leading by one point um, in the 74th minute, you don't go at goal, you go for the line and try and run down the clock, uh, get them all going, maybe score a try. Um, they did not opt to do that. They went for the poles and then the Sharks got the kickoff and they got the ball back and they had the opportunity to win that game. The Stormers, they had some questionable leader, leadership calls throughout the game as well. Um, a guy like Mbunambi, he was taken off the field just after that penalty as well. Um, so leaving the team with no actual ball fetches on the field anymore after suffering a blow to Yaku Kutsia earlier in that game. So there was some questionable calls from their management and their leadership um, groups in the end of that game and ultimately that lost them the game and the Sharks are going to play the Brumbies next week. Then the Bulls won convincingly over the Lions 48 to 27. After this win they have sealed the spot against the Hurricanes now. I think they might not have wanted that one and might, might have played someone else like the Brumbies or the Jaguares. The, the Hurricanes is a very dangerous game to play. Jaguares as well, Crusaders even worse. I think the easiest one they could have expected is the Brumbies and that's saying something if you're talking about a team that has a six game winning streak like the Brumbies had. The Lions, it's the first time in four years where they did not reach the playoff spots in the competition. They just again found gaps in the Bulls defense, especially on the fringes. They scored the quickest try of the whole Super Rugby campaign. 15 seconds it took uh, from Hakshiva Diamani. And they just needed one point from this game on the log to actually seal their quarterfinal spot. So that would be very, very hard for them to accept that they did not get that spot. The Bulls are coming back from a tour of New Zealand. So they are flying back there. Uh, it could go well. They did have a pretty... Um, pretty good tour with two draws and one win. This game was in contrast to the Stormers Sharks game. It was free flowing. It wasn't a good display of defense though. 14 missed tackles for the Bulls against the 24 missed tackles of the Lions. Paul Ardi was playing a crucial role in the Bulls' attack again. And then Marco van Staden, he was crucial at the breakdowns getting those turnovers. Guys, I hope you are also excited for the quarterfinals coming up. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are of me doing a highlight video or two next week. Then I'll see you for the, for the prediction video of the quarterfinals. Cheers.